Hello. Well, uh, this is a movie that I have, uh, really have not seen at all this year. Um, it is absolutely, it is clearly a continuation from a series of videos I did earlier this year where uh, I talked about the Rocky franchise as well as, of course, the you know, Creed films. Um, did not see uh, this film in the theater to try to be consistent with uh, other uh, installments in my lifetime that came out that I never saw in the, th in the theater. So there is that, though, I just never got around to getting this until, oh, not too long ago. Um, and that movie is, of course, Grade 3. Um, basically, the rundown of this film is... Uh, you know, Adonis D, uh, Creed, after the first, or after the second film, uh, he's retired from boxing, and so now he's uh, essentially helping people around uh, Los Angeles to help get them a chance at the, you know, the title shot and, uh, you know, to be the champ. And so, uh, a fighter he's been training, um, Sanchez is going to go up against uh, Ivan Drago's son, who we saw in the second film. And he's going to uh, fight him. And uh, in the midst of this, we see flashbacks um, uh, throughout the film of uh, Adonis and a friend of his, uh, a childhood friend, uh, Damien Anderson, who as an adult is played by uh, Jonathan Majors. Uh, of course, Michael B. Jordan is still Adonis Creed, and Tessa Thompson plays his wife, Bianca. Um, but he runs into him, and uh, so we, we see how uh, he helped uh, or how, uh, you know, Adonis would help, um, uh, Damien with, uh, boxing, you know, he did some, uh, boxing as a, like, a teenager, and so, you know, one night they go to, after, they go to, like, a liquor store after, uh, winning, After Damien wins the uh, boxing match, and he uh, and on the way into the liquor store to get some things that they're gonna, you know, buy to essentially celebrate, um, Adonis uh, sees a guy named uh, Leon, whom uh, we find out later was uh, uh, before he was adopted. Um, uh, Adonis was adopted. He, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, in the in the home that both uh, Adonis and Damien were in, uh, uh, this guy Leon would uh, beat on him, and so when he comes across him, he starts beating up Leon, and then some guys. Or some other kids who were around grab a hold of Donnie start beating him up well uh, in the gym bag that uh, uh, Damien had he had a gun and so he comes and gets a gun gets the gun out and pulls it on the guys who were beating up Donis and of course around that time is when the cops arrive and so uh, uh, he goes to jail uh, as we find out, for 18 years, and uh, Adonis ran away when that ha all happened after uh, the cops came more focused on Damien. Um, and so there's a, uh, quite a bit of guilt that Adonis has for what happened, and so he basically wants to try and make it up in any way. And so he has him spar with uh, Sanchez, and... Um, uh, they're all at a a, a party for uh, 
one of the uh, one of the singers that uh, uh, Bianca produces for us since you know she's you know has some more issues with her hearing and we also have see their daughter in this film and more of a kid actually child now so they're interacting with her now and but in their daughter is very uh gifted at school but she also gets into fights like uh, particularly with one girl who you know they sort of pick on her and so she retaliates by uh, with physical violence and so you know that's uh, obviously not good but there's a lot of uh, things that are sort of paralleling where you know like violence doesn't solve everything but also it's like you know like there are times where violence may be needed but you know you need to know when to actually use violence as opposed to that's your default setting and um so there's sort of parallels of, uh, uh, sort of with the uh, characters with you know a father and daughter and um Uh, you know, you know, Duke Junior is still here in the film, but um, in these films, and Felicia Richard is in this as his mother. Um, though, I, uh, and there's some tension between him, uh, Adonis, and his mom because uh, Damien sent letters to him when uh, or to, to Adonis when he was. Uh, in jail in prison and uh she never showed him uh the letters because she wanted him to move on uh from that and so we we also find out that she had a stroke prior to the events of this film and then i guess spoiler uh she has another stroke and passes away though they do she does talk so she and Donnie do have another uh, meeting, though at that point, you know, her, you know, she's uh, pretty much gone and she's like, you know, he's talking to her, trying to apologize because he kind of blows up on her how, well, this would not have happened if it wasn't for her. And she's like, you're right. And, how, uh, well, you know, maybe at one point Damien was looking out for you, but he isn't anymore. And she shows him a picture of him when he was in jail. And one of the, and the people next to him is a man who, at the party that Bianca had for like whatever singers, um, it, a guy came and uh, attacked, um, you know, Drago, and like hurt his hand. So now he's not going to be able to fight, and you know. Uh, uh, Damien doesn't really want to be a sparring partner for Sanchez, but you know. You know, he wants to fight, and but he's like, you know, you know, wants a chance to the child, but, you know, Donnie realistically is like, you know, that can't really happen. You haven't had many fights, and so, because you really haven't had it, you know, beyond the fact that, you know, when he was younger, he had fights, but as an adult, you know, he hasn't had any fights, so he has no real record of, uh, um, to speak of, and so... Uh, essentially, um, Damien has it to where he does get a sh shot at the title. And so, uh, Sanchez, and after a while, they talk, and how, like, you know, it's like, you know, Rocky was given a chance. You know, Apollo Creed gave an underdog a chance. People talk about that fight to, the day, to this day. And this could be very beneficial for not just uh, Damien, but. You know Sanchez as well because he would also be in that position he gives this underdog a chance who has never had any professional fighting uh, like experience really before um, but you know he obviously in jail he's kept up and kept in shape and everything so yeah and after but you know it, the, the uh, Sanchez and Damien fight and 
Damien wins, though there are uh, some very questionable tactics that he's using, like how he's like, like uh, you know, doing things where if he does it again, he's going to be disqualified. And so, uh, yeah, and when Donnie realizes how uh, he was being used by Damien and and with the death of his mother, he decides to challenge uh, 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 Damon to a fight. And so they have both, of course, have the training montage. And so, you know, which is uh, essentially uh, essential to have if in any film that is Rocky or related to Rocky. And so a training montage happens. And so from both fighters, and so eventually they do come and fight. And so a lot of this uh, comes down to the fact that, you know, you know, there's a lot of guilt on his part, and he, uh, Damien feels like he was sort of like abandoned by him, by Damien, and so, they, you know, basically they go to blows, and then eventually, you know, uh, uh, Adonis is the winner. And by the end, they actually, the two of them, uh, forgive each other like they forgive like how like it was what happened was neither their fault like it wasn't his fault he went to jail for that Damien went to jail but also it wasn't you know, exactly uh, Damien's fault either because you know it was you know if it wasn't for uh, Adonis uh, attacking Leon all that would not have happened and so essentially they forgive each other like neither is to blame you know both were at fault for their own actions. It wasn't the other's responsibility uh, for one or the other. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's a you know this is a very good film. Um, this is the directorial debut of Michael B. Jordan. Um, um, Ryan Coogler uh, uh, co-wrote and produced or co-wrote the story. Um, who directed uh, Creed 1. I believe he directed Creed 2, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let me see that. Um, oh, no, he did not write it. He did help produce it, though, uh, I believe. Yeah, an executive producer. So, Ryan Coogler has been involved in all the Creed films, which is cool. Um, um, but yeah, this is a very good film. Um, Rocky is not in this film. Uh, Sylvester Stone himself mentioned how he was not going to be in the movie. Um, and as time kind of went on, it kind of revealed how, you know... How, you know, basically, like, part of it is how uh, he and producer Ivan Winkler are not seeing eye to eye, mainly because of, you know, ownership to the Rocky property, how, you know, obviously it makes sense how, you know, way back when, uh, still not wouldn't have thought to have any kind of ownership of a Rocky property because he was young and he got his big break with Rocky, and so he was just thankful that a uh, script he wrote, uh, particularly with the part he wrote for himself, he got to play, and so he was just very thankful for that. Um, but as time went on, it was like he wasn't able to really uh, have as much uh, creative control of, or anything like that. Any sort of ownership, any kind of potential ownership he might have been able to have in terms of Rocky, he just isn't able to because of Irvin Winkler, who, you know, basically owns, basically the franchise outright. Um, and so the two of them aren't seeing eye to eye, but uh, Stallone is listed as a producer here. Um, though I have heard and seen how, in a way, it was more like a producer and name only he didn't really have much to do um uh with the film um but 
Stallone uh, obviously had no real issue with his name being listed as a producer. Um, uh, but it doesn't seem like he had much of an involvement in this film at all. Um, and he doesn't seem to have any uh, animosity towards uh, Michael B. Jordan or any of the other people of all but just him and uh, Erwin Winkler but yeah they um, <clears throat> they're the ones who like those two are at odds basically in a way so yeah but you know he, he does want to have a Rocky 7 of course with him not having the, the rights to the film or any ownership to where he could do a 7th film you know, uh, who knows? Um, there is a picture of uh, Rocky in this film. Well, sort of. It's Apollo Creed hitting it, but you can see the white trunks that Rocky wore in the first film. So, you know, in that sense, photographically, Rocky is in the film, sort of like how Apollo Creed is in the film with with pictures of him also so you know in that sense both of those characters are in it but you know through photographs um but yeah uh and i'm sure to some extent you know probably would have had to have some permission <laughs> for stallone if they had that his actual full body in that picture because it was like a shot where it's just like part of his leg and his trunks and everything. You don't really see his face. They're probably able to get around that. And of course, being able to reference Rocky. So, which is, uh, which would kind of be important to do in a film within the Rocky universe. But this is, again, like, this is a spinoff. Um, it's a very good film. Um, is it the best of the Creed films? Um, I don't know. I think I prefer the first Creed film the best. Um, but this is still a very good film. Uh, Michael B. Jordan is excellent in the role still. as Everybody in the acting department is good. And I think Michael B. Jordan did a very good job um, uh, directing it too. It looked very, uh, very well done, I believe. This is his directorial debut, if I'm not mistaken. So he did a great job out of the park, you know, coming out, you know, and um, also uh, Stallone's uh, directorial debut, uh, if I'm not mistaken, was Rocky II. Um, so yeah, both of them got their uh, directorial uh, debuts within the Rocky franchise. So. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Apparently there's work uh, being done for a fourth uh, Creed movie. Um, be cool if Stallone could have a cameo in this, in that film, at least. Um, the way the second film, the second Creed film ended, you know, he reunited with his son and that was... Uh, nice um, and so you know we could probably uh, infer how uh, you know either Rocky is back in Philadelphia or you know he's spending some more time with his son here and there um, and also Michael B. Jordan did say that for the absence of Rocky it did make sense for like you know we wanted to focus more on Adonis Creed's know family and that he has and um, explore sort of more of that world and I do think that makes sense um and it definitely works for this film uh very good uh obviously I do not have a slip cover because well again I guess I waited too long to get one though I'm sure if I really want one I could probably find somebody who could probably make me <laughs> A custom something there because there's people who actually do make pretty good slip covers. 
But I only bring that up because the first two Creed films are, they do have, uh, you know, the slip cover. So, yeah. Anyway, good film. Uh, uh, yeah. What do you think about this movie? Do you uh, enjoy it if you've seen it? If not, um, do you have an interest in seeing it? Uh, like if you've seen the previous Creed films or the Rocky films in general, would you like to see a fourth film uh, of this spin-off of the Rocky franchise? Or would you also want to see a, um, <clears throat> a seventh Rocky movie? Um, that'd be kind of interesting, I guess. I'd be curious what that would look like. Um, and, uh, there's also apparently going to be a Ivan Drago film with, uh, Dolph Lundgren, so a lot of stuff seems to be either in development or is absolutely going to happen, um, but yeah, uh, be interesting to see the future of this franchise and see what all happens, and, um, yeah hope all of you are uh, doing well um hope all of you are having a great day hope your weekend was great and uh yeah hope all of you are uh, take care and we'll have a great week so i'll uh <clears throat> see you all next time and just please take care